Welcome to Double M Innovations. The next innovation that I'm going to be working on is building a rocket stove water heater. And I'm going to make it out of this steel tank that's from a lawn roller. Before I had made a rocket stove out of a 100 pound propane tank, but something like that wouldn't be quite wide enough or big enough in diameter to fit a water coil around the inside of it and still get good exhaust flow past it. So I had to find something bigger, and this is what I came up with. This is a 14-gauge steel tank that's 18 inches in diameter and 36 inches tall. And this will work pretty good, and I can get everything contained right inside this steel tank. For the wood feed door, I'm just going to use a clean-out door, a chimney clean-out door. It's cast iron. It's 8 by 8 and that'll be big enough to feed the firewood in for the size of combustion chamber that I'm going to have. Now I'll show you the design that I have planned out. This is a design that I came up with. It'll be similar to a 6 inch rocket stove with a riser and a 6 inch exhaust. But I'm going to stick with what I know works to maintain a hot clean burn. And that's an insulated burn chamber. So this will be the front of the door. This will be the wood feed door here. And the air feed will be right through the door. And this right here is going to be a baffle above the burn chamber. It's going to be two inch ceramic fiber board that will help keep this uh, area of this burn chamber nice and hot. So it's going to be similar to a batch box rocket stove too, but a little bit different. This is going to be like at the base of the rocket. It's not going to be like over to the side. It's going to be right at the base underneath the riser. And then the exhaust will come around this baffle and up the riser. Then it'll come up to the top and flow back down across a coil of stainless steel tubing full of water that's going to be pumped around through here that's to be heated. Then the exhaust will go about the six inch stove pipe. This will actually be in the back of the stove. I just drew it in so you could see the flow of the exhaust gases. And this over here would be like the top view looking down at the insulated burn chamber. So this will be the baffle right here. This will be the front of the stove and the door where you feed the fire underneath this baffle. And as it burns, it'll come across the top of this baffle and then up the riser. And I'll probably add some secondary air feeds in here just to see if that helps any at all. In my other designs they really weren't necessary but I'll add them anyway just because I'm still experimenting. And a lot of the details here I'll have to come up with as I go building this because not everything is just laid out perfect yet. And actually the height is going to be less than 36 inches. Right now I measured this tank it's like 35 and 3 quarter and when I cut the top of this tank off I'll weld a lip around the edge of that uh, tank so I can drop the top back on so I can take it off and on. Height would probably be more like about 34 and a half and I might add some more boiler tubes right across the top of this bill and this will be insulated too we want all the heat to just run out to the steel on the tank the riser isn't going to be quite as tall as like I have in my rocket stove using that uh, propane tank. That one, the riser, I think it may be 24 or 26 inches tall. This one's going to be quite a bit less. But I don't need that push to go through a whole bunch of piping or anything. And if I keep the exhaust above this burn chamber, I'm not going to have any problem with smoke backing up when I first start this up. I don't need a whole lot of pressure to get this back down, so this riser height I think will work pretty good. So all the parts of this uh, rocket stove water heater will be contained inside this uh, steel drum, this lawn roller drum. And that will be pretty handy for building it and for moving it around later after I get it finished. And all these parts in here shouldn't be that heavy either. There will be some fire brick around here, but I still think all the weight should be under 200 pounds. I have most of the materials now I need to build this. Some of this stuff is left over from other projects I'll make use of. I do have a stovepipe adapter from a barrel stove. I'll make use of that. 
I could have just used a barrel too, but they're they're a little bit shorter, and this uh, tank here is a little bit taller. And I got some steel. I can make a frame for the door, and some of the ceramic fiber blanket. I'll make use of that, and ceramic fiber board. And this is the stainless steel tubing that I'll use for the water heating part. This is corrugated one inch stuff. It's used for solar heat exchanger piping. I think it'll be alright as long as I don't have it in the direct flame of the fire and full of water. I think it should hold up pretty good. I'll probably start out with uh, working on the door and the air intake. I got some uh, square tubing, a rectangular tubing. This is 2 inch by 4 inch. I'll cut off a piece and cut out the door so it'll fit through and make a little damper for that. That's probably what I'll start on first. This cast iron isn't too bad for cutting. As long as you don't beat on it with a hammer, you're usually pretty good. But if you start beating on it, it can break. I don't want that. With the experience I got from the other wood heaters I made, I'm pretty confident this will work decent enough for what we're going to use it for. We're going to use this in our deep winter greenhouse because we are going to need some heat in the deep winter months like it is right now. I just wish I had a heated shop to build it in because right now we're kind of stuck in a 20 below rut again. But I'll have to make do with the way it is. It's just going to be a little more difficult. But I'll keep making videos and updating the progress if anyone wants to follow along. And thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you again.